Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to our Tuesday night Bible class. We're so excited that you're with us tonight. Um, give everybody just a couple of minutes just to get, kind of get lined, get get joined in and um, get on Facebook with us. And as you do join, if you would, go ahead and please um, share the broadcast on, on your on your timeline, on, on your Facebook page. And let us know you're here and um, let us know where you're listening from. Amen. Because we've got some exciting things that are going to be happening. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We're so glad to have you guys joining us. Go ahead and... Um, has has the um grab grab you a cup of coffee get you some tea get you whatever it is that you want to get and we will certainly appreciate the fact that you guys will be joining us tonight we are going to continue our teaching on defeating fear and i believe we'll finish it tonight i'm hoping to if not we'll just continue on over to next week amen and so we're just excited about what god is doing hallelujah Amen. Praise the Lord. We're just so thankful for what God's doing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was just checking to make sure we were, we were broadcasting tonight. Amen. And we are. So we're excited about this. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead and grab your cup of coffee. Get you, some, get you a snack if you want that. And get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Because we're going to do and go and go through the Word tonight. Amen. We're excited about what God is doing. And as you're turning there and as you're getting ready, Got a couple of announcements. Just want to remind everybody about prayer service this Friday night at 7 p.m. at 2126 Skinner Drive in Hammond, Louisiana. We've been meeting for prayer, and God's been doing some great and mighty things, and we're seeing the effects of what we do on Sundays. Amen. And I want you to know that our Sunday services at 12 noon here at 2126 Skinner Drive have been simply awesome. God has been doing some great things. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Let's turn in our scriptures today, and we're going to continue where we left off. And like I said, we're going to continue our series on defeating fear. I'm hoping that we will go ahead and get it done tonight. If not, we'll just continue on. Um, 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, and beginning at verse 7. That's where we're going to go tonight. Chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 1 beginning at verse 7. Hallelujah. We're just excited to have people with us tonight. Amen. The Bible says this, and it says, For God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let me read that one more time. For God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Praise the Lord. You know, just to kind of uh, bring everybody up to speed to where we're at in this, in this passage, we need to understand that God's not the one who puts fear in our lives. Amen? God's not the one who offers us fear. Because the Bible tells us that God, in God there is no fear, because in perfect love there is no fear. And we've talked the last few weeks how you can interchange the word love and you can interchange the word God, and that there is no fear in love. God doesn't have any fear to give you. Okay, we need to understand that God doesn't have any fear that He can give you. God only has love, power, and a sound mind, according to this verse of Scripture. Now, do we know there's other things that He offers us? There's other things that He gives to us. He gives us blessing. He gives us life. He gives us joy. He gives us peace. He gives us all these things and all things that pertain unto life and godliness. But he does. The, the point is, he doesn't have fear to offer us. Amen. He can't offer us something that he doesn't have. There is no fear in him. Okay. And so, in this passage of scripture right here, in this one verse, he begins to teach us what we need to defeat fear. Okay. And of course, what he says is, first of all, he has not given this to us, but he says he's given us power. And we talked about that. We talked about what the power was. We talked about the dunamis power. Okay, we talked about the, the power. It, it's power for us to be able to live correctly. It's power for us to be able to live according to his word. It's also power to heal the sick. It's also power to raise the dead. It's also power to cast out demons. It's also power 
to do the things that Jesus did in the earth. Amen? And so then the next thing we talked about, we, we, we ministered a, a week or so ago, about how love is both an offensive weapon and a defensive weapon. The love of God that's in you is not designed so that you can sit there and feel all good and cuddly and, and squishy or whatever however it is you, de you describe that. But the, the God's love in you is both an offensive weapon and it's a defensive weapon. And we talked about that. Amen. We talked about that last week. I would encourage you to go back and review some of the um, teachings that we've done the past several weeks along this line. And so tonight we want to talk about the third, the, the third leg of the stool, so to speak. He says he has given you a sound mind. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. Because we need to understand something. That the battle, the Christian battle that we fight is not necessarily in our spirit. Okay, now we do do, we do spiritual warfare. Don't, don't misunderstand me. We do spiritual warfare, but the battle that we fight, it's up here. It's in our mind. It's our thought life, okay? Satan comes at our mind. He doesn't attack our spirit. He comes at our mind. If we look at how Satan came at Jesus... In, 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 in the wilderness, first thing he did was he tried to steal his identity. He began to talk about his mind. He says, if you're the son of God, then do this. Okay, it wasn't a battle of the flesh necessarily, although that was involved. It certainly wasn't a battle of the spirit. But what it was, it was a battle of the mind. He began to challenge who he thought he was, and he began to challenge his identity. Okay, and that's what we need to understand. Now let me talk about this here just for a second, and we're going to move on, and I'm going to give you four things tonight that the Word of God does for your mind. Amen? Four things that the Word of God does for your mind. Just hang on, we're going to get there with it. Okay, and watch what, watch what happens here. He, the, the Scripture tells us, He gives us a sound mind in verse 7. Amen? Now, let me give you a definition of that. This is actually a combination of three different words, but it's the, as a summary, it's the Greek word in the Greek, um, number 4995, in your Strong's Concordance. And if you don't have a Strong's Concordance, I would encourage you to get one. Amen? It means to have a disciplined mind. It means to have a self-controlled mind. Okay? And can I tell you tonight that you can't control your own mind. You can't tame your own mind. Only the Word of God is going to be able to tame your mind and bring your thought into captivity. The Scripture says that He to bring every thought into the captivity of God. Amen? And you can't do that apart from the Word of God. And that's where we're going to go tonight. So He tells us to have a disciplined mind. Okay, let's understand something. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians. The book of 1 Thessalonians. It's a couple of pages back. Amen. A couple of a couple of pages back. First Thessalonians chapter five. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. And I want to read the verse ver, read verse 23 to you. I'm going to read it first out of the King James, and then I'm going to read it to you out of the Amplified. We need to understand something tonight that what you look at in the mirror every day is not really you. You are a triune being. Amen. You are a triune being. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. And it says this in the King James. And it says, The very God of peace sanctify you holy. Okay, that's not the word holy such as the Holy Bible or the Holy God. It's holy. In other words, your complete person. Your complete person. And watch, he says, And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body. Let's stop right there. Spirit, soul, and body. You are a triune being. Let me give you a definition of how to remember this. Number one, you have a soul. You are a spirit. Okay? At the end of the day, you are a spirit, man. When you got born again, what got born again in you was your spirit man. Your spirit man is what got born again. Amen? Praise the Lord. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I got a little back feed here. Your spirit man is what got is what got born again. Your spirit man is what got magnified. Your spirit man is what got energized. Amen. It's your spirit man that got energized because God has made you a spirit. You are a spirit being. 
That's why the scripture can say that before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew who you were. Now let me read that same scripture to you out of the Amplified. Amen? Out of the Amplified version of the Bible. Hang on just a second. Give my iPad a, check, a chance to catch up with me. Technology is wonderful, let me tell you. It used to be that when I would preach and I would teach, I can remember the days of having four and five, you know, three, four or five different Bibles in front of me on, on the platform. And he was always reaching back behind you to get a version that you wanted to read. Or if you were fortunate enough to have someone in the audience with you that had a different version, they would read it for you. But, you know, now they got, I mean, a tech, not modern technology is just wonderful. Now look what it says in verse 23 of First Thessalonians 5 in the Amplified. It says this. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, separate you from profane things, make you pure and wholly consecrated to God, and may your spirit, soul, and body be preserved, sound and complete, and found blameless at the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ the Messiah. Amen. See, it implies that there's a process. See, we need to understand that we are a triune being. Okay? You are a spirit. That's, that, 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 that's the real you on the inside. When you die, your spirit is either going to go to heaven or it's going to go to hell, one or the other, depending on what the decision is you've made whether to accept Jesus as your Savior. You are a spirit. You have a soul. Now, what's your soul, Pastor Jake? Well, what's your soul, Brother Jason? Your soul is your mind. It's your will. It's your emotions. Now, can you see how when, when Satan first came and tempted Jesus, he didn't attack his spirit man. What did he attack? He attacked his mind. He says, if you be the Son of God. He challenged who he was. He challenged his identity. So you are a spirit. You have a soul. And you live in a body, okay? You, this body has five senses. You have, uh, you have seeing, you have smell, you have taste, you have hearing, you have touch. This body allows you to function in the earth realm, in the earth. When this body dies, when this body, excuse me, ceases to function, what happens? Your spirit man leaves your body, and it goes to its destination that you've already prepared for, whether it's heaven or whether it's hell, as I said before. Okay? So, that's the reason the scripture says here, you want to be set apart spirit, then soul, then body. That's why the scripture says spirit, soul, and body. Let me tell you how this works. Understand that the word of God is food for your spirit, man. Your spirit man has to eat. You have to feed it. You ha and, and it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to feed on what you put into it, if you put in the Word of God, then it's going to re be receiving healthy, healthy nourishment. It's going to it's going to grow. It's going to grow. It's going to grow. And what happens is your spirit man will begin to dictate to your soulish nature how it's supposed to act, what it's supposed to do, how it's supposed to think. And so now your soulish man becomes sanctified. It becomes set apart because of the renewing of the, of, of the mind by the Word of God, and your mind dictates to your body what it's supposed to do, okay? I know that's a simple definition, but we don't have a whole lot of time to get involved in it, so we're sanctified spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's move on just a little bit here, I want because I got some ground we need to cover tonight, okay? So we're sanctified spirit, soul, and in body. Praise the Lord. Okay, we are a triune being. So the battle is for the most part in your mind. It's in your mind. Amen. It's in your mind. Say it's in your mind. Amen. It's in your mind. The battle for the battle for my spiritual welfare is in my mind. Amen. Okay. So we will learn to re to respond according to the word. The spirit man trains our soul which in turn trains our body. Amen? So we, that, that's what we need to understand. Now, let's move on, and we'll, we'll, we're going to clarify this as we go. There are four things that the Word of God does to your mind. Four things the Word of God does to your mind. Amen? Four things the Word of God does to your mind. Number one, 
Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Turn there with me if you would. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Romans the 12th chapter and verse 1. And it says this, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Watch verse 2, watch verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove which is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Well, Pastor, how, do, how does my mind get transferred? I'm going to tell you in just a second, okay? But first understand this. Look at that word transform. Let me tell you what that word transform, transform is in the original Greek. In the original Greek, that word transform is the word metamorphose. Does that sound familiar? Go back to your um, elementary school science classes and your high school biology classes. And we hear the word metamorphosis. Remember, remember what that means. Okay, that's when the caterpillar goes into the cocoon and it becomes a butterfly. It comes out something completely different than it was when it went in. It metamorphs, it changes into something completely new. You know, 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us that if any man be in Christ, he is, the original Greek says, he is a new creation, a new species of being that never before existed. Amen? It's the word metamorphosis again. It's the picture of the frog, tag, tadpole turning into a frog or the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. It's a, it's some, it changes into something completely different. Okay? So when we begin to renew our mind, when we begin to renew our mind, what happens? Okay? Our spirit man feeds on the Word of God it goes into it, it, it begins to affect our mind, and our mind becomes transformed. It metamorphs, it morphs into what, and, and, and it begins to take on the attributes of God. Okay, let me give you that, that word "renew" in Romans twelve two. It means when we say we're going to renew our mind, that word "renew" means to renovate. It means to renew. See, we need to understand something that when we, you know, renovation implies two things. Renovation implies two things. Number one, you have to tear out and tear down and take apart. Okay? And that's what happens when the Holy Spirit comes into your life. When Jesus comes into your life, and he does it so gently, he does it so He's a perfect gentleman. He doesn't come in and just swing hammers and cut saws and bust and kick walls and stuff. He comes in, and what does he do? He comes in, and he begins to change your thought process. Okay, what he does, he renovates. Renovates, and, 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 and you've got to do some tearing out. So what he begins to do is he, he begins to take out the way you used to think. Amen? He begins to take out the way that you used to talk. He begins to take out the way that you used to act. He begins to rip that stuff out. And sometimes it's painful because we're so, we, we've done things so like the Babylonian system that this world operates in. We've done it that way for so long. Some of us have done it for 10 years. We've done it for 18 years, depending on when you became born again. Uh, I know people who are 60 years old. They were heathens for 60 years. And then all of a sudden, God gets a hold of them. They get born again. Can you imagine the junk that the Holy Ghost has to come in and rip out so that he can begin to replace it, re re replace with new materials? Amen? So you see, he begins to take out the way we used to think. He begins to take out the way we used to act. He begins to take out the way we used to talk and he replaces it. All of a sudden you realize that, hey, my thoughts are not my thoughts anymore. All of a sudden my ways are not my ways. You, be, you, 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 you begin thinking like God. You begin speaking like God. And then you'll begin to act like God. Amen? But you're not going to do that apart from the Word of God. Okay, that's what we're going to see here tonight. Four things that the Word does for us. Number one, it transforms and renews. Number two, we're going to come to that next. Number two, it 
diagnoses us. You know what happens when you go to the doctor. What do you do? You walk into the doctor's office. Those of you that, 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 that personally, I walk in divine health. I very, rarely, seldom ever go to the doctor. But when I do go, I'm going to tell the doctor, this is what I'm experiencing. This is what's happening to me. And what's he going to do? He, by his skill and experience and by his learned education, he's going to begin to diagnose what is wrong with me. Well, can I tell you something tonight? The Word of God diagnoses what's wrong with us. Amen? Turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews chapter 4. The Word of God diagnoses what's wrong with us. Amen? Hallelujah. Happy to see Apostle Tommy Robinson with us tonight. Amen. Brother, please call me when you get a chance. Need to talk to you. Miss you, man. But the Word of God says this in Hebrews 4, 12. It says this. For the Word of God. Now, very quickly, there were two different debate. There are four different words, but for the sake for, for the sake of teaching, there's two different words for the word "word" in the Bible. Excuse me. One is logos, which is a general word. This Bible, when you read it, this is the logos word of God to you. The other word is the word "rhema." That's when God pulls a scripture out, and all of a sudden, it becomes real to you. It becomes alive to you. Okay. But the scripture says here, for this is the general word of God. The Greek, this is the logos of God. It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow. And watch this. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It diagnoses what's wrong with you. How does he do that? He does this by simply, he, the, the word becomes a mirror to us and has the mirror, as we look into the mirror of the word, we come closer to Jesus, closer to our Father. And you know what happens? He doesn't beat us up with what's wrong with us. We begin to see the imperfections in our life. We begin to see what's wrong in our life and then we have the, the, the decision and the choice to correct it. Amen. I like to use the illustration of an ice cube. If you'll take an ice cube and you'll hold it in your hand, at, you know, at, at the kitchen sink or whatever, okay, and if you look at it, you'll probably see some, some flaws, some cracks, some imperfections in it. It don't really look too bad, though. It looks like a nice ice cube, okay? If you take that same ice cube and you go closer, here's the light, you take it closer and closer and closer to the light, the closer you get to the light, the more imperfections you're going to see the more flaws you're going to see. My brother, my sister, our Christian walk is that way. Let me say that again. Our Christian walk is that way. The closer we get to Jesus, the more of our imperfections we're going to see, the more of our flaws we're going to see. And all we do as we see that, what we do is we take that portion of the word, I'm going to show you this in a second, think of, Hebrews 4.12, think of Hebrews 4.12 has the diagnosis and the prescription from the doctor, okay? It says we move in, we begin to see more imperfections, we begin to see what's wrong with us, but he, you know, but he doesn't condemn us, he doesn't beat us over the head and tell us, you know, you're this horrible person because you've got all this in your life. What we need to do is move from Hebrews 4.12 where we're being diagnosed with our problem, to Ephesians 5. Turn with me there if you would. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. Come on, I'm going to teach you something tonight, and I'm going to pull you out of depression, I'm going to pull you out of fear, and I'm going to put you on a road that you can walk and do what God wants you to do. I want to set you free tonight. Think of Hebrews 4.12 as the diagnosis and the prescription for what God's doing in your life. Now, let's go to Hebrew, uh, Ephesians 5. Watch this. Grab this. Get this. Be, go, go, come back and listen to this message because right here, God's going to set some people free. Get ready, get ready, get ready. God's going to set some people free. Ephesians 5.23 For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Get submission, get submission to your husband out of your mind for a second. Don't worry about that. We're not teaching that tonight. 
But understand that Christ is the head of the church, and he's the head of the church for one reason, to save it, to preserve it, and to give it life. Understand that tonight, okay? So therefore, verse 24, has the church is subject unto Christ, submission is important, you have to submit to him, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Here's where I want to go, verse 26. Hebrews 4.12 is the prescription and the diagnosis. It, the, word, the, the word reveals what, what the problem is in your life. And then the word comes in and does what in verse 26? That he might set it apart, sanctify and cleanse it, clean it up with the washing of the water by the word. Remember when we taught on Mark, ch Mark chapter 4 several months ago? And we, and, and, and we taught that the, the, that the word of God is seed. And the word of God is planted in us. And what happens? The word of God, okay, the word of God causes affliction. And persecution to come. Why? Because Satan comes immediately to take away the word. So, in a way, the word causes your problem. But the way that you defeat affliction, the way that you defeat persecution, the way that you defeat the cares of this world, world is by staying in the word. So the same thing that causes your problem is the same thing that brings you out of your problem. Your word, the word of God causes the problem to arise because the enemy comes in to steal, to kill, steal, and destroy. And so the word of God causes the, the problem to arise, but the word also brings you through the problem. The word of God in Hebrews 4.12 diagnoses your problem and writes the prescription for it. And then in Ephesians 5, we learn that the Word is what will cleanse us and fix the problem. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen tonight? Does that make sense? Is that clear? I hope so. Amen? So, four things that the Word of God does. Number one, it transforms your mind. Number two, it diagnoses what's wrong in our life. Number three, it heals us. In fact, you know, Hebrew, I mean, Proverbs 4.20 says that his word is health. In the original Hebrew of that, his word is medicine to all our flesh. Amen? Anything that we face in this, in, in, in this world, his word is the fixture. It's the fix, it's the fix for it. Amen? It's not doing some kind of special penance or anything like that. It's staying in the Word and doing what His Word says. Amen. Okay, so that's three things. Number one is that it transforms our mind. Number two, it diagnoses our problem. Number three, it washes us or fixes the problem. And number four, the Word brings life. Turn with me to the book of Genesis. Chapter, well, don't turn to the book of Genesis, but I'm going to, I'm going to give you this illustration and we're going to turn to two more scriptures and we're done, okay? If you read the first chapter of the book of Genesis, you'll find out something. That every time God spoke, something happened. We like to say it like this at Waters of Hope International Ministries. God speaks, it manifests, and it's good. Amen? In fact, you ought to write that down. I'm going to say it for you one more time. God speaks... It manifests and it's good. That's the pattern God, God has in the scripture. When God speaks in your life, when he declares salvation in your life, it manifests then and it's good. Amen. When God says by your stripes, by, by, by his stripes, you are healed, healing manifests and it's good. Amen. When God says by by, by the sacrifice he paid, that you can be blessed and highly favored, it manifests and it's good. Amen. Whenever God speaks, something happens. The God's word are capsules that carry his will and his intent into the earth. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Okay. Genesis chapter 1. Read that when you get time. Read that in, in, in your Bible devotions. And just realize 
that the creator of the universe every day speaks over your life. He decrees and declares his mercy and his grace is new to you every morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. We're almost finished. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 4. Watch what Jesus said. Watch what Jesus said. Matthew the 4th chapter. And we, we've alluded to this all night, but I want you to see this very quickly. Matthew chapter 4. The 4th chapter of the book of Matthew in verse 4. Okay? And when it started verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If you be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he, Jesus, answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God's word produces life. John chapter 6. John the 6th chapter and verse 63. Watch this. It is the Spirit, John 6, 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the Spirit that quickens. The flesh profiteth nothing. But the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, and that word, word there, is the word rhema. Remember the difference. Logos is a general word. Rhema is a specific word. Jesus wants to speak a specific word to you. But the only way he ever does that, there is one key to everything I've said tonight. You've got to be submissive to what the word of God says. You can't take in this word and then decide you're going to go do whatever it is you want to do with it. You've got to take time and you've got to meditate on the scripture. What does Joshua 1.8 say? Joshua 1.8 says that if you will meditate on the word day and night, then you will prosper and be of a good success. What got Joseph in trouble in Genesis? What got Joseph in trouble? Joseph had a dream. It's a type shadow of him hearing a word from God. That's what, he, that's what he heard. He heard a word from God. And he saw, first he saw the, the, the stars bowing down to him. And the, then he saw the stars and the planets bowing down to him, I believe it was. And then he saw sheaves bowing down to him. Okay? And he was rebuked because the, the stars, it, it symbolized his brothers bowing to him. And then when the sheaves begin to bow, it symbolized his parents, okay? Mo Joseph got cocky. Joseph got a little arrogant. He, he didn't wait to see what the dream actually meant. He ran off and began to run with it. You know, I can think of a time when, you know, Psalms 37 says that he will give me the desires of my heart. Okay, and I'm closing with this. I remember when I was a young Christian, and I still believe you can do this. There's, there's nothing wrong with it, but at, at some point you become more mature. I always wanted a red Chevrolet pickup truck. And after I got born again, I still wanted a red Chevrolet pickup truck. Well, eventually, God gave me a blue Ford pickup truck. Amen? Okay? And I was just as happy with it. And one day I just kind of got to ask, and I said, Lord, I said, I understand you give me the desire. You said you would give me the desires of, of my heart. I said, I really wanted a red Chevrolet pickup truck, but you've blessed me with this Ford blue pickup truck. And so I'm going to ride in that. I'm going to drive that. I'm going to give glory to God. Amen. In fact, that's back when the CB radios were a big thing. And I got born again in a little town up in North Louisiana called Anacoca. And so I had my CB handle. I was the Anacoca Preacher Man. Amen. Break a one nine. Hallelujah. But anyway, and so he sat there. One day I was waiting, just kind of waiting still before him. And he said, son, he says, I will give you the desires of your heart. But there's more to that than just you getting things. He says, if you'll read my word and you'll listen to me, 
I'm going to place desires in your heart. You see the difference, guys? Okay? We can sit there and we can believe God's word for carnal things, for fleshly things, and there's not a thing wrong with that. He says, if he clothes the lilies of the field and if he feeds the fowls of the air, then he's, going, he's still going to feed us. He's still going to bless us. He's going to take care of us. But if we really get in tune with him, we're going to find out that him giving us our desires is not just this stuff he can give us, not just our food, not just our clothes, not just our material things, but he will begin to place desires in our heart. And that's when we'll begin to minister and, and be a blessing to other people. Amen. So glad to see Prophetess Ina Wesley and her husband, Apostle Tony Wesley, with us tonight. Amen. So I'm so glad everybody joined us tonight. Amen. It's just a blessing to be able to minister to you guys. So I would challenge you to do a couple of things for me. Number one, go back and re-listen to this message. So especially for those of you who join late, go back and re-listen to this message and go back and listen to the other messages that we've done over the last three, four, five weeks, I believe, on defeating fear in our lives. Amen. So I want to challenge you to do something. I want you to go to our website tonight, www.whimofla, and I want you to do a couple of things. Those of you who are not members of Waters of Hope, who don't come here on a Sunday, we've got a partner tab that's on that website, and we would challenge you to become a partner with us. We just mailed out our first official, I call it official because we've done it in the past, but we mailed out our first official partner gifts just, just this past week. Amen. And it was just a blessing because we have, we have some people who do support us online and we're growing and we're, and we're becoming more and more of what God wants us to be and where God's bringing us. So this, this week we, we got some partners that, that have partnered with us on a monthly basis and we sent out the first monthly partner um, packet this week. It was a, actually it was a, um, a couple of CDs of um, some teaching and, um, everything. And so we would challenge you if you're not a member of of Waters of Hope International Ministries Revival Apostolic Prophetic Hub and you don't come here on Sundays, go to our website and partner with us. And amen. And we basically we ask for we want your prayer requests and if God leads you to, and, and, and we ask you that you get you give a donation every month because we're doing the work of the kingdom here. We're already gearing up for Cuba 2018, we're going to be bringing a team into Cuba next year. We brought a team into Cuba a couple of years ago, and God said it's time for us to go back. Amen? So that's the first thing I'd like you to do. Number two, I'd like you to go ahead and share this message on your timeline. Let people know what, that, that we're here, and let's go back and just share it on your timeline so other people can be blessed. Amen? Number three, if you... Don't have a church home if you're not fellowshipping anywhere. I challenge you to make the drive. It's not that long of a drive. To 2126 Skinner Drive on Sunday afternoon at 12 noon. Okay? And we will be here ministering and praising and worshiping the Lord. And we're just excited, amen, about what God is doing in our lives. Praise the Lord. We're excited about what God is doing in this, in this, in, in this, in this, I don't even, we don't call it a church. It's an apostolic prophetic hub, amen? We train leaders here. We train people to go out and do the things of God, amen? And then, number four. If you're not able to make it here and you're not able to watch us online, give us a call, contact us. We will come and minister for you. We will um, bring, we'll bring our whole team. We did this just a couple of weeks ago at Breakthrough Ministries. Our whole apostolic prophetic team came, and I mean, God moved in a mighty way that night with um, Apostle Janine Ferrier over here in Hammond. We will bring our team to you, whether it's for one person or 1,000 people. Amen. If it's a house meeting, if it's a church, if it's a conference, we'll be glad to come. Just contact us through our website. We want to be a blessing to the body of Christ, and we want to be a blessing to you. Amen. So, www.wimofla. That's W-H-I-M-O-F-L-A dot com. Check out the partner tab. Check out the giving tab. If you don't want to partner, God's leading you to give us a gift. We will receive it. We will pray over it, and God will bless you a hundredfold. Amen. We're so glad you guys joined us tonight. Don't forget our prayer service Friday night at 7 p.m. here at 20, uh, 2126 Skinner Drive. And then we will see you again on Sunday 
at 2126 Skinner Drive in beautiful Hammond, Louisiana for our Sunday afternoon service. Amen. Be blessed. We love you guys. We're praying for you. Keep us in prayer, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.